All right, so 10.2 is something that you've seen before in geometry, uh, law of sines and law of cosines. We are going to spend a little bit of time, though, um, going off a little bit more with the law of sines because you probably didn't do as much as we're going to do this year with it um, back in Honors Geo. In case you forgot, here's a regular old triangle, ABC. Just so that we are clear on the notation, the side opposite of angle A will be little a, the side opposite B will be little b, and the side opposite angle C will be little c. And now the sine of A, so if I take angle A and divide it by the side length across from it, that ratio is going to be proportional any way you do it around the triangle. So if I do sine of B, divided by little b, that's also going to be the same as sine of angle c all over little c. Okay? Hey. Hey. Um, this is my lunch. What do you want me to do? Grab it and come back up? Yeah. Do you need a pass? Yeah, I need a pass. Here you go. Law of cosine, sorry about that, is also related to a non right triangle. This is the law of sines. The law of cosines takes, um, let's say we start with angle A. This is how I always remember it. Start with angle A. You're going to take the side opposite it, which is A, you're going to square it. And then it's almost like Pythagorean theorem. Now you do the other two sides squared, so B squared plus C squared. And then you do, because this is not a right triangle, there's like this little adjustment that you have to make to this. And you're going to subtract 2 times B times C, and then cosine multiplied with the cosine of this angle A here. Okay, and you can do that all the way around the triangle. Um, if I center myself around C, then we say that little c squared, and now we look at the two sides adjacent to angle C, that's A squared and B squared, and then it's the same pattern, two minus 2AB two cosine of angle C. And if I decided to center myself around angle B, then I would say that opposite it is little b, and we're going to square that and then we do a squared plus c squared, those are the two sides adjacent to angle B, minus 2ac times cosine of angle B. Okay, so that's the law of cosines. You use these when you have triangles that are not right triangles and you're trying to find missing angles and missing sides. Okay, my advice to you guys is going to be, if you can do the law of cosines, do the law of cosines. If you don't have a choice and you have to use law of sines, then go for it. But the law of sines, I will warn you, you have to be careful because there might be two possible answers when you're working with it. Okay, so we'll do a couple of examples so you guys can see how they work. Let's say I have this triangle here. Let's say this is 120 degrees, this is 30, and I want to find this side out, and I know that this side here is 15. Okay? And the question is to find theta, and well, let's go ahead and also find y. So we want to solve the triangle. So we want to find x, we want to find y, and we want to find this angle theta up here. Well, the obvious place to start is theta, which has to be 30 degrees because this has to add up to 180, which then means that this is an isosceles triangle because you got 30 degrees here, 30 and 30 means that these are the two bases, 15 and y are the two bases, those have to be the same, or I'm sorry, the two legs, those have to be the same, so y is 15. To find x, now we have some options. We could do law of cosines, since I know that this is 15 and this is 15, 
and I have the angle in between, we do log cosine. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm centering myself around this 120 degree angle. So opposite of 120 is x squared. And we're going to say that that's equal to 15 squared plus y, which we said was also 15 squared, minus 2 times 15 times 15 times cosine of 120 degrees. Okay? So we simplify. That's 225 minus 2 times 15 times 15. So that's going to be 450 cosine of 120. So now we get 450 when I add these two together, minus 450. The cosine of 120 is negative 1 half So then we have 450 plus half of 450, which is 225. So x squared is going to be 675. And I think we can reduce that a little bit. If I take the square root of both sides, we get root of 675. Uh, let's see, 675 reduces to, this is 25 times 27, so that's 5 root 27, and then I know 27 is 3 root 3, so it should be 15 root 3. Okay, so there's one problem where we did law of cosines to find a missing side. You can always do law of cosines if you have adjacent sides and then angle in between to find an opposite side. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say this is 45 degrees. I don't know theta. I don't know alpha, but I know this is 12 and this is 10. Okay. So if I'm trying to get started here, since I know these two sides, maybe we could try law of cosines, but the problem with that is I don't know the angle in between and I don't know the side opposite of it. Let's call it x. Okay, so law of cosines isn't good to get started. So let's stick with law of sines. Uh, let's see, I know that sine 45 degrees, if I divide that by 10, that's going to be sine of theta over 12. If I multiply by 12 to get rid of the denominator on the right, I can clean this up a little bit. Sine 45 is root 2 over 2. Twelve divided by two is six, so that's six root two over ten. So then we get three root two over five equals sine theta if we reduce it. Alright, but problem with this is that I need to find inverse sine now to get theta. So let's do that. Inverse sine of the left side, inverse sine of the right side, so then we get theta is, now we're going to use our calculators, make sure we're in degree mode, that's good. So then we do inverse sine of 3 root 2 divided by 5. We get 58 degrees. Let's say 58.1. Okay, let me rewrite that. 58.1 degrees, approximately. Now, from last chapter, we know that there's actually two places where the sine is positive 3 root 2 over 5. We know that 58.1 will have a positive sine value 
and we know that if we go to the second quadrant, that this angle, whatever that is, will also have a positive sign or a positive y value. So we actually have to do kind of like what we did last chapter. Since this angle is going to be 58.1, I want to find out what this other option here is. So if I do 180 minus that 58.1, we get 121.9. Okay. So we have two possible angles here that we're working with. This is what I mean about law of sines. You always have to check for the second case that may or may not work. Let's work with the first case, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so going back to this triangle up here, if theta is 58.1, then that means alpha. If I take 180 and subtract 58.1 and also subtract 45 it has to be 76.9 degrees approximately and we can just check across from 58.1 is 12 across from 10 is 45 okay do you guys remember that with triangles, the smallest angle should always be across the smallest side, and the largest angle should always be across the largest side? So right now, the smallest angle I have is 45, and I get 10. The biggest angle is 76.9. I don't know what this is yet, but I have that the smallest, or I'm sorry, the middle angle is across 12. So, so far, this seems to be working. We'll check at the end to make sure that everything matches up the way it's supposed to. All right, so now how do I find... How do I find x? Well, now we can do law of cosines. I know 12, I know 10, and I have the angle in between, which was 76.9 approximately. Let me get a better answer for that. So if I take 180 minus 58.1 minus 45. I'm going to store this into A. So I've stored 76.948, whatever that is, into angle A so that I can use that throughout my calculations. Okay, because I don't want to round until the end. But to set it up, I'm going to center myself around 76.9. So that then the opposite side, which is x squared, should equal the two adjacent sides squared added together. So 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cosine of the angle in between, which I'm going to say again, I'm going to call this angle A or alpha, and I have it stored in the calculator as 76.94, etc. Okay? So now pretty easy. If we simplify, we get 144 plus 100 minus 240, if I'm not mistaken, times the cosine of angle A. So then x squared will be 244 minus 240 cosine of angle A. And to find x, now we can just take the square root of both sides. So we have 244 minus 240 times cosine A, since that's where I put it, which is about 189, well, x squared is about 189.7997, and so on. So if, if I square root that, I, sorry, I didn't square root it yet, so ignore this. So far, x squared is about 190-ish. Take the square root of that, round to the nearest tenth, let's say. We get that x is about 13.8. So now if I go back to the triangle, let's see if everything matches up. Smallest side is 10, which is across smallest angle, which is 45. Smallest, or the middle angle, which is 58.1, is across 
12, which is the middle side, the largest angle, 76.9, is across the largest side, which is 13.8. So this is case one, okay? Case two, I'm gonna redraw the triangle. forty five x twelve and then we're working with the other possibility for theta which is about one twenty one point nine so I'm going to store that oh, which, what was it one twenty one point nine goes up here I know it doesn't look like one hundred twenty one point nine degrees but we're gonna pretend that it is so then, here's alpha, this is 10 still. Okay, so here's our second possibility. <clears throat> if I find the other angle, we do 180 minus 45, and then 121.9, oh. so we get about 13.1-ish, okay? So it's possible so far. 45 is across 10, 121.9 is bigger, and so is 12 compared to 10. So then if we do this right, the smallest angle is 13.1, so that means when I do x, if this works out, I should get a smaller value than 10 and 12, okay? So we're gonna do the same setup if I center myself around alpha, I can do law of cosines again and say that the side opposite alpha is going to equal 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2, 12, 10, and then 13.05, whatever that was. I'm going to store that into A, so I'm going to call it angle A. And now I just work it out. So x squared is going to be the same exact thing as before. We'll have 244 minus 240 cosine a. If I type that in the calculator, we get that x squared is about 10.200 and so on. And now if I square root that, we get that x is approximately 3.2 if I do one decimal. Okay? So if I go back to the triangle, the second case was 121.9 degrees for theta. And if you match up all the sides in order from smallest to greatest, they check out with the angles from smallest to greatest. Okay, smallest angle 13.1, smallest side 3.2. Middle angle 45, middle side is 10, largest angle 121.9, largest side 12. So that works, and this is another scenario. So both cases work. Both cases work. So you always have to check for both cases. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention was that when we're square rooting all this stuff here, since we're dealing with side lengths, I am dropping out the plus or minus since we can only have positive lengths. All right. Uh, one last setup, and then I think once we do one of them, you guys can handle the rest. Let's say we have to find all the angles. And all we have is that this is theta, this is alpha, this is beta and we have 7, 9, and 10. Okay, the idea here, um, you can't, well, not that you would start with law of signs anyway, but let me just say, even if you were thinking that, which you shouldn't, because you always try to do law of cosines first, law of signs won't even work, because you have theta, alpha, and beta are all unknown angles, so no matter what equation you set up, you have two unknowns. So law of cosines is the way to go. Anytime you have to find all the missing angles, law of cosines is your best friend, and you can actually do the law of cosines twice to be done with the problem. Let's start with theta. So if I want to find theta, 
the side opposite theta is 9, so 9 squared should equal the two adjacent square, uh, sides squared, add it up, minus 2 times 7 times 10, cosine theta. So we get 81 equals 49 plus 100 minus 14 times 10, which is 140, cosine theta. Make sure you do your order of operations right. 149 minus 140, cosine theta. 149 minus 140, you cannot do because you got multiplication here. So you're going to have to move 149 over. So then you, hit, you get negative 68 equals negative 140, cosine theta. Divide. So you get 68 over, oops, sorry about that. 68 over 140 is cosine theta. And now you can either reduce the fraction or not. The point is you have to do the inverse cosine. So inverse cosine of 68 over 140 is going to be theta. And if I do that on the calculator, I get that theta is about 60.9 degrees. So there's one of the angles. Now to finish the problem, you'd have to pick another angle, let's say alpha, and then repeat law of cosines. But center yourself around alpha. So the setup would be angle, I'm sorry, side opposite alpha is 10. So that's going to be 10 squared equals 7 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 7 times 9 is going to equal cosine alpha. And again, it's the same process, so I think you guys get the idea. Get, get cosine of alpha alone, move everything around, do inverse cosine, and then you have your second angle. Once you have these two angles, you can definitely just take 180 minus each one of these to get the last angle. All right, so that's how you find all the angles in a missing in a problem where you don't know any of them, but you have all the sides. And this concludes the notes for 10-2.